Good Monday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about cars and trucks and SUVs and motorcycles and dogs. And come on there, Scouty, my boy, and the dogs. You have to watch me chase my dogs around. And what's my one dog up to? I don't know. It just doesn't end here. Taking care of the dogs and trying to get them up here to the, to the barn, the shop. You were just outside there, buddy. So come on, let's go. Let's go over to the uh, the barn. Hey, good mo good Monday morning there, to my subscribers and any new subscribers watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and watching the Monday morning conversation. My daily thing I do now in my life is to try to share some share some information and just have some gentle talk and and uh, wow. It just seems to me like the times are racing by me. Yes, it just seems like time. It's unbelievable. What? February day, February 6th, up here in the Virginia, Maryland area, you'd have to honestly think that the spring time is upon us, that we're just racing through the another year of life of 2023. I mean, as you progress, progress in life, it just seems like the time goes by faster and faster. Wow. What is that all about? And for me, what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about race, racing, race, all that good stuff. I thought to myself, I kind of just kind of come on the tip of my tongue, some ideas and things to talk about on a daily basis. And YouTube creators or any staff or anybody tell me what to say. And I just kind of speak off the tip of my tongue and figure I give other people things to think about and hear and, and hear my voice and yeah, so here's the... Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on, get in. Come on. Time to go in. Come on, get in here. Get your... Scout, get in here. Come on. Get in. Yeah, get your butt. It's time to go to work. Hey, cleaned up the shop some yesterday. There is the Ford F-150 Power Boost. Nope. Get in here. Let's go. Come on. And boy, boy, 18 miles a gallon. People are telling me it's going to get better. I don't know. Here's the... Here's the... The Braptor. And I was to drive that yesterday to the car show, and I didn't do that because of the circumstances. So I took the race truck. I mean, think got my bench all cleaned up. Maybe be kind of follow my channel. This thing gets pretty trashed, for sure. Come on, get in. Come on. Kind of got my other area over here, kind of all cleaned up and stuff, and blah blah blah. Right? Let's get the dogs up here. The race is on. It's Monday morning, first day of the week. Yeah, the race is on. Maybe you know this feeling you're driving to work. You feel like you're racing to get to work. I mean, who doesn't have that feeling? Uh, yeah, come on. The roads and you're racing down the road with everybody else that's a hurry to get to work. And then it totally goes opposite in the afternoon and you're racing to get home. All right, let's get the heater on. But it's just beautiful. I just can't get over how nice it is. Look at all the uh, geese. Out here hanging out in the pond. They're all, uh, they're on the ice. It's still iced over, even though today's gonna be probably 50 degrees. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, so, anyways, probably goofed up the video. I just by accident turned off the video. Oh, goodness gracious, it's so weird. When I wanna make these videos. Sometimes the, uh, the phone, you know, my phone here doesn't, my, my mouse moving, but. You're not hearing me talk, so the sync, the synchrony, what do you want to say, isn't in sync. Wonder who did the generative, pre-trained transformer interaction this past weekend. Wonder how many people joined up to OpenAI. It's growing by the millions by the minute. Talk about a race of time. Let me set this down right here. I don't know if people like that or not. Oh, uh, my kids call me. So, I mean, this is just so aggravating. So aggravating. Just so aggravating. Hello? Can I drive my bus today? Um, what are we going to do? It's the right Okay. What are you sure. Bye-bye. Oh, it's a question about what car she's going to drive. Challenges. You know, the kid has my challenges in life. What are you going to drive today, right? Oh my gosh. So anyways, yeah, so it just totally kills the, the, the momentum of my conversation about generative pre-trained transformer, the 
OpenAI, the cheat GPT, that's what I call it. Uh, it's the race of times of people wanting to join up to that like never ever seen before. And here's a thought that I got to think about yesterday was, think about this. So I mentioned last week, are people going to start using artificial intelligence to try to figure out how to win the lottos? I mean, I seriously think that's going on. Here's, here's something to think about, which I thought about yesterday. Um, let's just say you win the lotto and the governing bodies and the states start to realize that, yeah, people are, uh, people are using artificial intelligence, the, the generative pre-trained transformer technology and they're winning lottos well what what if the, the states now say they are going to do a background check on you to see if you are interacting with the generative pre-trained platform to uh to try to figure out how to win the lotto and if they have evidence of that you're disqualified wow yeah i'll be amazed if that conversation doesn't come up gotta have some coffee here because everybody's racing to win the lotto, right? Who isn't racing? But I don't know. A lot of people sit in sidelines, so it gets to be a billion dollars. Yeah, sorry for the interruption there. Yeah, so so I think to myself, wow, the state of times, where we are, racing. I thought to myself, racing. Where did where did the real where did mankind originate of with racing? And I thought to myself, I just think of the Roman times. I think the chariots. And interesting enough, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I think that's really where us individuals started getting into the uh, the racing with a a item that had wheels on it, the uh, chariot carts. And so it's interesting that the Romans uh, had a coliseum called Circus Maximus. I think it's kind of funny, Circus Maximus. Sometimes I think it's the political parties in our in our country, but. Anyways, um, yeah, so apparently back in the Roman times, the chariot drivers could be slaves. And the chariot drivers usually weren't many times recognized as much as the owner of the horses. And back in that day, whoever owned the chariot uh, horses and the chariot, you know, the, the cart and everything, they were usually very uh, aristocratic or very astute, you know, wealthy people. But some of the uh, chariot drivers would rise to a level where apparently one of the drivers, and I can't pronounce his Greek name, Roman name, but apparently he had a 24-year career, and he won like close to 1,400 races out of like 4,000 races over his career. And in today's values, he, he won the equivalent of $17 million throughout his life. He became very successful. And it talks about how for the uh, Roman chariot drivers, some of them, if they were good enough, would be earn more than lawyers and uh, and, and in other individuals that have very high, you know, credentials in, in society. And and then another thing they did was the the chariot drivers needed money, so they had to raise money, kind of like NASCAR. The reason I this popped in my head, I was thinking about NASCAR 500. They come 500 comes up here two weekends from now. The 19th of February. Hard to believe it's already racing season for Daytona 500. Wow. But I thought to myself, Daytona 500 is starting. And that's what they kind of say the chariot races back then were in so many aspects like today's, uh, like the Daytona or the, the NASCAR racing. Because the Coliseum was like 2,000 feet long, the circle was. And the drivers or the chariot drivers would have maybe four horses. And they have to do like seven laps around the, the uh, Coliseum to uh, to place where they won or lost. So I see myself race, racing, you know, race and racing. And so it's interesting. If you type in race, you're going to get then the mankind. You know, where did mankind originate from race and all that other stuff? But I thought to myself this morning, yeah, let's talk about race and racing. And so, and once again, the reason it kind of popped my head is because the NASCAR drivers are already practicing and getting ready for the big Daytona 500. For me, NASCAR, I used to follow it to a degree, never a hardcore NASCAR guy, but I do like to see the Daytona 500 usually, kind of like, that's kind of like the kick off the season, and I kind of watch that, but then as, as the months get warmer, 
it's hard to justify sitting in your house watching a uh, racetrack on the Sunday afternoon. I just have a hard time doing that. And I'd rather be outside doing things, riding motorcycles, taking care of my property, whatever. So I thought to myself, racing, and what has racing done? I mean, for the most part, racing has been about more so in modern times for us to get better products. I can still remember I was growing up, I grew up in the, the Yamaha YZs, and I just loved motocross. And everybody knows that if you go back to the 70s and the 80s, the big, big time, you know, like the Honda CR Elsinore, CR 120 of Elsinore was brought out, and, and the, the Suzuki RM 125, and the uh, Kawasaki 125, and Yamaha, and you had your different classes. And I just, I love that stuff, but it was all about the competition of each manufacturer trying to draw you into thinking that they had the better motorcycle for you to buy as a person. That's all the racing. That's what Daytona 5, that's what the NASCAR was created for the big the big three, Dodge, GM, and uh, Ford, to be racing among themselves to prove that they had the better of the cars. If you go to the car dealership on Monday morning and buy your Ford or Chevy or Dodge because that's who won that weekend and that's who you think's the better of the, of the three. So racing for us has done a lot of great things for us in today's modern times because of it's forced the manufacturers to push an envelope on their technologies to bring to us just incredible products. And even more so, I think like I think like the, the Hellcat, you know, the, the Mopar muscle is all about the straight straight tracking. You don't read much about Dodge Hellcats going around tracks and beating out all these other uh, individuals. It's all more about the straight track, quarter mile, eighth mile racing. And I just think to myself, that's where really the Mopar name came from on the muscle side, not that Richard Petty didn't get the uh, Daytona uh, 500 win and the Dodge Charger that did over 200 miles an hour and the Hemi motor was designed and created the legend of you know the Hemi motors that created an incredible following that, that he was kicking everybody's butt with that freaking motor. That was incredible. That kid will be coming out here any minute. You know, it's crazy. She's already got, she's already pulled up. That's funny. I thought I heard something and she got the car. So I'm over here. of my property here. See, she's over here. You know, the car was over there. And she's already gotten out of the spot and over there. She had called me and went to drive. And now the weather's now the weather's warmer, she can drive the Mustangs. I'm not worried about the uh, summer performance tires getting uh, ruined or her getting good traction to go down the road. So that's what that phone call is all about. Yeah, anyway, so racing. And I just think to myself, the history and our times of, of what's uh, been, been given to us through, just like my GT500s, those cars are so track-oriented. I mean, they're, they're so borderline just ready I have the track pack GT500, the Heritage Edition car I have. That car is so really ready just to go to the track and really just do incredible um, performance, incredible, you know, beyond my skills because I've never raced at a racetrack. So, yeah, I'd be lying to anybody who watched my channel. So, yeah, I'm going to take this to the track this weekend. And, yeah, no big deal. I'll be out there just smoking and be, you know, Mr. Special. Yeah, right. I'll be Mr. Special once people go by me. Because I just don't have the experience of doing that. I don't have those credentials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So racing, our technology, and it seems like we're racing more than ever in in our ice age to be eliminated by the EV age. It seems like more than ever the race is on for the ice age to be kicked to the curb. I mean, if, if you the dominant, if you go anymore to the website to the road and track car and driver motor trend truck trend um auto week uh auto authority you go to all these different websites and it's just the never ending content of the electric vehicles and and how truly the race is on to get the technology infrastructure in this country more than ever be unbelievable and i think to myself but why is that i mean what are we is, is Mother Nature Earth really at the burn up point that the radical beyond radical change of Mother Nature and the Earth is here? You, know, you hear you hear dates like 2030, 2035. Well, 2030, it's now less than seven years away. 2035 
it's now less than 12 years away. And if you're an automotive manufacturer, you may think seven years for you and I is a, a long time. No way. If you're a, you're into R and D and you're in the infrastructure of having to build factories and get things in order to start getting mass production of EV vehicles, seven years is not a lot of time because of all the behind the scenes work and materials and things you have to do. But it just seems like more than ever, the race is on. The race is on. It's <clears throat> here's going on here. Get some more coffee. The, uh, look at the barrel of oil. Barrel of oil is now in the low 70s. Yeah. Did anybody follow my channel last summer and watch? You know, I talked about how this will not sustain itself. Did anybody do I get any credit for that? I mean, sincerely, I said last summer that your this this five dollar gas ain't gonna last. The three dollar gas will be back, and a bunch just a bunch of malarkey. It's a bunch, you know, the race. You know, it was the race of a run out of fuel. The race of Ukraine war. What is going on? What is going on with Ukraine? We are at war with Russia. We are giving Ukraine all of our technology to go fight Russia. The only difference is we're just using the U Ukrainians to fight the war for us. I mean, for the most part, we're just like using, I mean, I guess, I mean, is that maybe a, a good strategy? I mean, military-wise, did we sucker this guy Zelensky into buying that ball game? I mean, think about it. Maybe really behind the scenes, this is a lot more deep than we realize that, that the United States came to closure. We'll just use Zelensky to uh, fight Russia and, and make them look the little of the two in the end of the day. But really, behind the scenes, it's always been about we're really going to be in the war. And we really want to fight a war because it's money. I mean, military is money. When you got uh, these defense contractors building all these weapons and technologies, that's huge money right now being spent. And so if you and I owned uh we've, we own companies or defense contractors and we're getting orders for all this military technology and all these weapons we're jumping up and down right now i mean this is a a heyday i mean that's the sad thing of war is it enriches so many but then it destroys so many others yes yeah, so what is that all about you know what is that what's that and it's like the urgency the constant urgency Zelensky's always like you know you read an article he needs weapons like yesterday he needs this like yesterday he needs even things got to move faster this guy here it's like buddy i think you've been played man i think you've been played i think that our country's playing you and we're letting russia just obliterate your your country as we strategically play a game to really just maybe in the end defeat russia just to put them in their place. I don't know. I mean, that's a kind of a crazy thought. But at the same time, you think, wow. Ah, you know, the race is on for the war with Russia, right? Yeah, so back to EV stuff. You, you hear so many comments, though, about this race to get this technology here. But you hear so many other people that seem to have more common sense that say the, the, to sustain this implosion of electric vehicles it's going to be very challenging for the raw materials. It's going to be very challenging for the electricity infrastructure. I read it, or I mentioned this other week, that the electrical companies are going to have to spend billions, hundreds of billions of dollars, probably trillions in the end, to upgrade all this electrical uh, infrastructure because they're caught up in the race because of the, what, the Inflation Reduction Act, and there's probably another bill that this administration's passed that's giving uh it's giving incentives tax incentives and credits i could talk the other day about how the battery that the battery uh manufacturers in this country you're going to get basically a 45 dollar credit per kilowatt per battery uh so it's gonna it's gonna bring down uh the price of batteries extremely if it makes basically what i was I told you people the other day is the government has in place for the EV battery manufacturers that come to this country, the government's going to subsidize them by $45 per kilowatt credit. And right now, it's anywhere from $100 to $125 per kilowatt to build a battery pack for a car. So as a manufacturer, that could be a 45% savings just right out of the gate here in this country to make batteries. Wow. They're, they're, talking, they're not saying that Tesla's gigafactories may get that or not. I don't think it'll get it because it's not a new factory being built. This is more about brand new infrastructure that these companies are spending money 
to build these factories and they're going to get rewarded with this credit to help them offset the cost and make it worth their while to, for the investments. That's why a lot of these foreign uh, companies are now applying for uh, U.S. Uh, manufacturing uh, status. So, so there is another, you know, it's another race to qualify for who gets the uh, the credentials to get that as well. But you know, once again, what is the race? Why are we under like hyperspeed for racing? to get to the electric, electronic, you know, the EV technology. And meanwhile, there's just incredible um, strides that are being, uh, they're gaining in the ICE technology, the internal combustion engine uh, vehicles. I mean, for me, the power boost, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've had two different people now reach out to me, and maybe I'm just racing too fast to, to closure that that truck's not going to get 23 miles a gallon. This gentleman that reached out to me, I think, in, I don't, I don't know, he doesn't, it doesn't sound like he, maybe he's in Canada. Um, he's saying that he's getting like 25 to 28 miles per gallon out of his vehicle. But he said it takes time. You got to wait till the engine breaks in. All right, well, okay. I mean, I, I can only hope that these other YouTube people that watch my channel are correct. And I mean, I don't know why they'd reach out and not be correct, but I've had two different individuals say that, that truck is definitely going to get that 23 miles a gallon, and I'm just racing too quickly to closure. It's not, right? Racing, I'll use that, I'll use that uh, word there. So racing in the car industry, racing in the motorcycle industry, all those things have always been a dominant factor of the manufacturers trying to uh, present how their product is the better of the two, that persuades you to want to buy their product. Look at Harley Davidson in India. And look at the Street Bagger. Do you, anybody watch the Street Bagger series that just came back where it's about the, uh, the Harley Davidson and Indian racing each other with the chop style uh, baggers? Like the ST Harley Davidson, the, the motorcycles, they've made these like shorter rear tour packs that are, I should say, rear saddlebags that are much smart, smaller. Pretty cool racing. And Harley Davidson was. From my understanding, last year they kicked butt because they brought on an incredibly talented uh, rider. And Indian was struggling. Indian didn't have a good year. I could be wrong on that, but as far as well, the series I saw, and when I was getting out of that, uh, dirt tracking basically is what they're doing, like flat tracking, but it's baggers that they're flat tracking with. And Or was it, no, actually, no, that's not right. It's not dirt tracking. It's actually road rally racing like the uh, the cafe style motorcycle racing. So yeah, my apologies. That's wrong. It's actually street racing in the tracks, like they do the uh, the cafe style motorcycle riding. And these guys go around the circuit. And yeah, and apparently Harley Davidson had the edge on Indian because of they had had a better rider basically. Even though some were saying the Indian just wasn't performing as well. I don't know. I didn't really follow it. To watch all that stuff, you really got to get tuned into it. It's just like NASCAR, you know, it's just like the uh, the Gator Nationals. Here, I'm going to go to the Gator Nationals. Hard to believe. I mean, I'm just blown away that here already, just the time races so fast by that even for me, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm getting ready to go to Tennessee this coming weekend. And with a glimmer of hope, or it's nice weather because I'm taking the motorcycles down and do some motorcycle riding. And it's supposed to be decent, but it's supposed to rain as well. But then right after you get back from that, just like three weeks later, I'm packing. I'm going to Florida for about 10 days, and I'm going to be down there at the Gator Nationals. And, wow, just it seems like time is racing by so freaking quickly. Yikes. This isn't something how all the technology and everything we have is more than ever, but you can't change time. You can't change, you know, <laughs> there's the earth and the world continue to spin, spin but even though the what was the big uh, thing, the, the, the core magnetic field of the earth, had stopped moving or something. Does anybody, that was, was like two weeks ago. Just uh, Can anybody follow us up? Was it a race to get to the balloon? So, what was that all about? What is that all about, right? The balloon. Weird things, man. Circus. Well, who's running the show? I mean, seriously, who's running the show in this country? I mean, I just think to myself, wow. Okay, so now, kind of, we had the car conversation, the race, racing in the times. Anybody watched my YouTube channel yesterday, the car meet, great meet, great people, had a really good time. Just really cool people. 
and I just love talking to people and, and I love talking to them to see what their passion is for a vehicle and, and that's what I try to radiate through my channel is hey you're there right there with me and you get to hear the person just talk nobody here nobody here hey just stop it there's nobody here so you, you just people have the passion for their vehicles and it's always about wanting to be faster isn't it something that we're just it's never good enough that's what i was saying a while back it's never good enough just like that gentleman that has that blue beautiful c8 mustang the uh, what's it the rapid blue beautiful car and even for him you know he just wants a little bit more he just really wants that z06 which i think that's gonna be very hard to get anytime soon but i think the the, the corvette electric vehicle the e-ray or e-ray the e-ray i guess they call it uh, that's a really cool car setup, and he's really intrigued by get that because he knows and have that all-wheel drive capability just to make that car that much faster and that much more connected with the road. So it's always about you know faster racing. You know, is us individuals we get down the road and we're going down the road and we're always kind of like kind of looking at the other guy and they're looking at us and we're in our nice car and they're like well, okay, who goes first? It hasn't who hasn't done that right? And so, anyways, that was a great show. So now, here's the next thing I thought. I thought about race. So when you when you say the word race, it's kind of very generic. It can be it can be you know race, racing, and then I think race. I think to myself, wow. When I get around people, I talk to people in general conversations, and I I just think to myself, wow. We're definitely in the race of times. Not only in the the car world and the technology world, but we're so in the race of our country of our differences of what i look like to what somebody else looks like and i just think wow it's so it's it's really is disturbing and i feel uh unfortunate and it's a subject that a lot of people just really don't want to talk about because we know as individuals this country came from uh, slavery and black slavery and, and for anybody that's a compassionate person in today's society and age, none of us at all uh, think that was the right idea or the best idea, but that's where our country was founded, was really on the, uh, the basis of the 1619 readings. If you want to go hear the views of others, just go to 1619 readings of the first slaves brought to this country and indoctrination and all that other stuff. And it gets pretty heavy and deep, but at the same time, it's something you can't ignore. And for me, I think, wow, what we're, what we're witnessing more than ever in our society today is we are at the race um, relations uh, challenges once again. It's never gone away. I think it kind of gets off the radar screen, but then it gets on the radar screen. But I think that more than ever, um, the agendas and the political positions that race is being used more than ever to advance how one person thinks things should be versus another person thinks things should be. And just to the point of like reparations that I've mentioned this many times, like Gavin Newsom in California, I think California will probably have a chance of being the first state. I wouldn't guarantee it, but definitely they're going to probably go the furthest of any state in this country that advances the bill for reparations to be paid for uh uh, ancestors, I should say. And this is the thing that I think that sometimes isn't clarified. My understanding is if they do reward um, slave individuals, meaning that if you uh, have any ancestry of directly related to slavery in this country, then in California, you will then qualify to receive a payment of uh, monies. And the monies haven't really been settled yet. On whether you know it's a million dollars, three million dollars, five million dollars, and I've kind of talked about this off and on. So I think that California will be one of the first, possibly, to get the bill advanced as far as it can go, and does it get passed? I don't know. Apparently, July of this coming year, that's going to be more of a very heavy, heavier talk in California, which would be very interesting. And for me, that seems like there's a race. The race is on to get the reparations in California to come to terms and settlement. Because I think that's going to be Gavin Newsom's ticket to probably run for presidency. I think if he accomplishes that in California, that's going to be a huge, huge uh, you know, win for him to get things to be supported by a lot of other people's uh, you know, th thoughts and views, which then I think he would then push that to 
then go to a national type of reparation. And, and once again, this kind of this irks people, it irritates people. Other time, I'm sure some people are like, hey, my day has come for reparations, and this is going to be a great thing. And and I mentioned it last week or the other week that I think to myself, wow, how does an individual of color handle that his best friend of color has ancestry of slaves, and his and he doesn't. But he had the same challenges as his friend does, and his friend knows that he had the same challenges because of his color. And and his friend gets all the money, he doesn't. Wow, I mean, how, do the, how is that going to be handled? I don't know. I mean, I think that that's, I mean, wow. Paying people for problems, there's such a fine line there. And I get all that. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of me. I'm not a person that's going to have any control of any of that going on. But the reason I'm bringing the, the race up is because it seems like more than ever our younger uh, generation of people are being basically in so many ways taught that you shouldn't be proud to be what I look like. And I not even hear comments from younger people about how if they can categorize when they uh, fill an application of their race, if they have... Uh, a different, you know, if they have Hispanic in them, you know, Latino, if they have a different uh, ethnic uh, background as far as family generations go, Indian, you know, whatever it may be, they would prefer to put that down instead of, you know, Caucasian or white. Wow. So truly, sadly, the school systems in our country and the colleges of our country, more than ever, the teachers are promoting more than ever that you're you being you know the person that looks like me it's a disgrace and you shouldn't be proud of of what um ethnic group you are wow i mean i think to myself wow that's just so unfortunate because it's just creating divisions again it's just you know, so you're just now pushing the divisions even further because i think that many people understand that the slaveriest country was, you know, very bad and very uh, cruel, but to then persecute those that never had anything to do with it, that starts to get pretty radical. But that's kind of where we are. And as the reparations really then divide us even more, I think the reparations is going to be the separations. So they need to really rename that what they're trying to do. Yeah, the reparations will be the separations. Because as I just said, a person of color that has a friend of color that witnesses his friend gets all the money and he doesn't, how is he going to feel? I mean, to me, I'd be like, this is not fair. How is this fair? I've had to go through the same hardships he's had to go through in my lifetime that they're claiming that in, in modern times are still going on. So, no, it's not reparations. It's called separations. Wow. And then I think to myself, let's get really deep on this. You think to yourself, the Roman times is where slavery has been recognized, the Christians and the Jews and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and you think to yourself on how slavery came from families selling their own to enrich themselves. And just beyond believable to think that I was, a, you know, I mean, just, I understand. It's, uh, it's deep and heavy. And, but I think to myself, okay, so from, you know, for me, we had slavery. Yes, you know, my gen how many can I trace back to the Roman times of I have ancestry but directly related to slavery that enriched so many back in the uh, Roman times? Yeah, right. So, but I think, okay, well, if you go back to the Africa and the families that sadly sold their children off to others to bring them here to this country to be slaves, I think to myself, well, are those families in Africa do reparations? I mean, think this through. You're 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 now having ancestry. You're you're going to go back to ancestry that goes back, you know, x amount of years. Well, could it be traced all the way back to Africa? I mean, are there people in Africa? They're going to find out that the reparations have been paid to family, and and they're going to and they're going to be like, well, wait a second, but it wasn't for my your my generation that I'm part of your generation for selling. Uh, the, selling my family to go to America 
then you wouldn't get the money. I mean, it would get heavy and deep. It sounds too crazy, but I'm just saying, is that is that the next? Is that the next? Raise my hand. I think it's going to come out through the uh, the the, the uh, reparations, which is just it's the separations. So sadly, I think that the reparations, and here's is me as an individual here. I'm not the person that makes the policies that will come to be. I'm sharing with others views and ideas. And and so it gets really deep, gets really heavy of what's going on in our country right now with uh, the race divisions. And for me, I'm witnessing with younger people that are around me that are borderline, you know, in some ways they don't want to acknowledge that they're the, the person that I am because they're being taught and being shamed that, you know, we're the problem. Wow. It gets pretty deep and heavy. Now, just once again, I, I have no desire on my YouTube channel to promote the hate, the violence. That is a new I am, and it's more about sharing ideas and views. You have all these type of discussions going on in the, uh, the general media. So, you know, my channel is not about revving people up to be mean to others. And I just think sometimes you can step back and you can think things through, be a thinker. Is there a better way to handle the challenges of the divisions of race in our country without it becoming agendas and media driven that persuade people to look at things that just really aren't the correct way to look at things and how to come to closure what they think is right versus wrong. And that's where that's where that's where it all boils down to. What is right versus wrong? And that's challenging more than ever in today's society, especially with now artificial intelligence. You know, the open AI, the generative uh, what's it for me, I, it's that GPT, generative pre trained transformer, with that now in our in our life where people are just living behind the computer to I guess Give information, find out information, and, and where's that all going? I mean, where's that all going? Wow. I think it's going to get pretty heavy and deep. And does it create even more division in our country because of artificial intelligence? Wow. Yeah. The reparations are not, I think, upon us. The separations are upon us. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for watching my YouTube channel. Appreciate all the support, all subscribers. And I really do appreciate the nice comments. And I'm not... I'm not going to respond to people that would start making comments that are just, you know, it's not a debate. I'm not here to, de to debate people. I'm here to give people ideas. It's not where I'm wanting to, you know, start going back and forth. That isn't who I am. I'm just saying to you, hey, think, hey, you know, I have no problem people reach out making comments. Yeah, hey, great point. Yeah, I kind of see what you're saying. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, I mean, I get all that. But anyways, thanks again. What's the next adventure? I don't know. This is a busy week for me. Got to get things all in order here before I leave town. Get the truck packed up. Got to get a 1,000 miles in the truck so I can drive it to Tennessee where I do the right thing to break it in. So I got to go ride around on that and take care of business, which I do about every day of my life. So anyways, once again, God bless. Stay safe. Stay tuned. And what's the next big adventure? I don't know.